Hello everyone, how's it going? Sure, so I'm sure a lot of you have already seen videos and articles about this, read through it and understand it, but I want to sit on it for a while, do my research, understand the story in and out before I produce a video. So hopefully I earn your sub. If I don't, leaving a like is also a good idea. It does help me out a great deal. Or dislike it if you felt like it was a really poor video. It's up to you. So Unity plan price and packaging updates. So for the sake of summary, this is what's going on. I'm going to go through everything and provide my research, but this is what's going on. Basically, Unity is going to start charging developers, publishers, and premium services that provide games developed through Unity for each install. So, say you bought a Unity developed game like uh, Sea of Stars just came out. And if you purchase that and you download it on Steam, that is one fee. Say you want to take the game on your Steam Deck and you install it on your Steam Deck. That's a second fee. Say you got the game on Game Pass. Game Pass offers the service for PC and... Um, Xbox users say you download for Xbox and one time for PC those are two installs two fees so you can see how this stacks up over time it can be detrimental to a company even go bankrupt entirely because itch.io games which are basically free games that a lot of developers use as resumes to showcase their skills entirely free and usually built on unity because unity is usually the first entryway when it comes to game development unreal engine is very popular but from the developers i've spoken to both indie and AAA, they tend to go to unity first before graduating to the more profound programs like unreal engine this allows them to be a lot more malleable but that's what i heard i could be completely wrong about it that's what developers have told me but regardless this has been incredibly unpopular for a multitude of reasons so this comes officially from unity uh all this will be linked below like i always do so effective january 1st 2024 we will introduce a new unity runtime fee that based on game installs we will also add cloud-based asset storage unity de uh, develop op tools and ai runtime at no extra cost to unity subscription plans this november so on top of paying for the subscription plan, you also have to pay for this runtime fee. It's like, can you imagine if you like, um, say you bought a car and every time you drive the car, like say every thousand miles, you have to pay a fee to the manufacturer. Say you drive a BMW because BMWs are shit. They are just, they're a crappy company. I don't know about their cars. I've heard only good things about the cars, but as a company, they're just terrible just look at all that subscription stuff that they're doing the fact they're locking out features by putting in mobile game microtransactions regardless imagine if you had to pay a thousand like um ten dollars for every a thousand miles you drove that would be ridiculous right that's kind of what they're doing here you already paid them for the tools or better yet i'm a youtuber i make content using adobe premiere adobe photoshop imagine if every time i uploaded a video adobe said you have to give a portion of the revenue that video made to us like what nintendo did back in the day people would be like what the hell i'm already paying you 32 dollars a month to use your programs why am i paying an additional fee which would be logical as many of you know unity engine is in fact two substantial software components the unity editor and unity runtime the unity runtime is code that executes on player devices and make the unity games work at scale basically if you run it on a phone it'll compress the game so it works on a phone or on a handheld device like steam deck or you know expand it if you have a big monitor on a pc rig with billions of monthly downloads we are introducing a unity runtime fee that is based upon each time a qualifying game is downloaded by the end user the customer we choose this because each time a game is downloaded the unity runtime is also installed also we believe an in initial install base fee allows creators to keep going on financial gains from player engagement unlike a revenue share this right here makes no fucking sense what the what are you talking about that's like an oxymoron what are you talking about financial gains from player engagement how is that like in any way financial engagement i mean it's engagement for yourself but not to the player in fact i can guarantee you there are going to be some insidious individuals who are going to use this as a way to bankrupt companies because they'll say all they have to do is buy the game for like 10 bucks and keep uninstalling and reinstalling the game constantly in order to bankrupt that company and if you don't think people are that petty there were people back in the day i don't know if they still do it but people would actually buy view bots and uh followers 
and then send them to Twitch channels that they hated in order to get them banned. I think Twitch is a lot more aware of this, and I also believe that these viewbot the companies now use like insidious like little tactics like they use crypto only they don't allow paypal or any type of that type of currency that can be traced so you know you're learning a lot right now from me <gasps> thresholds for revenue uh, and installs games qualify for a unity runtime fee after two criteria have been met one the game has passed a minimum revenue threshold of in the last 12 months and the game has passed a minimal lifetime install count we set high revenue and game install thresholds to avoid impacting those who have yet fi to find scale meaning they don't need to pay the fee until they reach this significant success you know this is just like what valve does like it's like this is so stupid and so obtuse like you not game developers not only have to pay like publishing fees and other overhead but now they have to pay this they're not gonna do that like they have to first like they have employees electricity say your computer dies you have to take into account that say you need a new monitor like a lot of st this stuff that goes to game development on top of the fees that you have to pay to the companies that host your game GOG Steam Epic Game Store uh, Xbox PlayStation Nintendo they all take a cut like yeah you can technically download the game directly from the company and they usually encourage that but for the most part a lot of us are going to use steam or any of these other programs where all our games are there for convenience like how many of like how many of us are going to install different launchers for different games or have you know separate uh, icons for different programs that they want to run most of us would rather have convenience so this is just stupid only the game only games that meet the following thresholds qualify for unity runtime fee unity personal and unity plus those who have made two hundred thousand dollars or more in the last 12 months and have at least two hundred thousand lifetime game installs so this right here say you made two hundred thousand dollars that's only net profit that's just the amount of money that you made from the game sales initially you have to take in consideration the fees, like I said, depending on what platform you are hosting your game in, which is largely Steam, which they take a 30% cut. On top of it, again, you have overhead for your employees uh, and other resources that you need to take into consideration. Electricity is actually something that a lot of people don't take into consideration. You're running these PCs like constantly. Your employees, you got to make sure they're taken care of if you have more than one employee. And it, it's just like... This is so idiotic. You can tell that this was written by someone who doesn't really understand game development because right there I can just pick and just destroy it. And I'm certain a more seasoned senior game developer will just look at this and say, what the hell? <laughs> Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, those that have made a million US dollars. Dude, most of the people who use Unity are indie developers. They'll be lucky if they see $200,000. A million dollars? What do you think this is? Is it the new Madden game full of microtransactions or um, Call of Duty or God of War? They'll be lucky to cross a million dollars. That rarely happens. Or more in the last 12 months. Or have at least a million lifetime game installs. Dude, you, this was not written by an actual game developer. Flexibility and discounts for Unity, Personal, Pro, and Enterprise. With this new policy, as of January 1st, 2024, we will offer Unity Personal to anyone regardless of how much revenue they make, provide more flexibility in how creators manage their license. Once a game passes the revenue and install threshold, the studio will pay a small flat fee for each install. See the table below. So basically, it's like the mafia. <laughs> They're like, oh, we'll give you this loan. But the second you start making real money, that's when we come knocking to your door. That's when Fat Tony comes in with his goons and just like, where's the money? <laughs> Give me the money. To adjust for scale, Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise subscribers will be eligible for volume discounts that rapidly reduce the per install cost of Unity runtime fee. This means that in addition to other benefits to Unity of the cost of Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise licenses can be offset by savings as the game grows so the more your game is successful the more you pay like this is like the biggest f you in the world like imagine saying that you are too successful pay us more <laughs> like imagine like um say like imagine the company went bankrupt who would pay those fees like are they gonna find the game developers and knock on their door and be like hey your game just uh started 
making a lot of money, we demand compensation because uh, a huge influencer decided to play their game and start to shout it out to a bunch of their friends. And again, with itch.io, itch like all of this stuff, you see how it just starts to snowball into absolute absurdity. Like you're just basically telling everyone, do not use our platform. Finally, we structure our fees so that they can take into account the variability of game monetization between more established regions like North America and Europe versus emerging game regions like India. A breakdown of pricing and discount structures below. Dude, what the hell? This is like one of those modern game deluxe edition charts. You know the one like Ubisoft where you have to, you need one of these in order to tell what the hell you're going on? What the hell is this? Dude, look at this. Um... 125 per install, six cents per install, two cents. Like, this looks insignificant, but imagine, like, games stay on the platform for essentially, for the most part, forever. Like, a lot of games do stay on those platforms for a long period of time until the store is either shut down or the game is delisted. Like, uh, you know, those licensed games like Transformers War for Cybertron, Fall for Cybertron, Spider Man Edge of Time, Spider Man Edge, um, Shattered Dimensions, the Tron games. Like, those are licensed games that get shut down. There's also the idea that, you know, maybe the games get delisted because the companies go under and there's a whole licensing issue. Like, that's what happened with Telltale games, with the Minecraft uh, story mode games. So, there are a lot of other reasons that games could get shut down, but if they remain active, even after the game has, the game studio has, you know, shut down, say for Typhoon Studios, who did the incredible Journey to the Savage Planet, they shut down. Yeah, the new studio that formed from those developers bought back the IP for Journey to the Savage Planet from uh, Google, which was Stadia, back to, uh, when they were hired on as one of those internal developers that fell through. But yeah, you see how this is just problematic. Like, be a developer and you look at this and you're like, what the hell? Uh, free reduction for use of Unity. Qualifying customers may be eligible for credits towards the Unity runtime fee based on the adaption of Unity services beyond the editors, such as Unity Game and Services or Unity Level Play Meditation for mediation for mobile ad supported games this program enables deeper partnership with unity to succeed across the entire game life cycle please reach out to your account manager to learn more dude this is just such what the hell this is literally like the game developer mafia <laughs> like give us your money right now if you want to use our engine they do realize that there are other engines out there right New services and tools, no seat price changes. This November, we will update some Unity subscription plans to add extra value. This is going to be exciting. New ca capabilities include better collaboration, Unity DevOps, cloud-based asset management, Unity Asset Manager, role and access controls, team administration, and the ability to add <laughs> the ability to add AI functionality at runtime. Didn't Steam ban AI games? I'm, I'm just saying, like, what? <laughs> These new tools and services will come to no increase in seat prices as we continue to help creators adapt to the growing complexity of game development. Here's the breakdown. All Unity plans will get Unity Senses, which enables you to embed AI model in the r Unity runtime inside your game or application while needing to pay an additional cloud compute cost or introduction latency. <laughs> Unity Personal will include the Unity Asset Manager free tier, 10 gigabytes of storage total. That's not 10 gigabytes? Dude, game developers will fill that up in less than half a nanosecond. That's nothing. A maximum of three Unity DevOps seats featuring five gig. Then they cut it in half. <laughs> then they cut <laughs> of storage and 200 Windows build minutes and team administration based roles. Oh yeah, you only get the base roles. <laughs> Forget, you want premium roles? This is like cyberpunk. Oh yeah, you want premium roles? Sorry, that's an additional fee. <laughs> it just reminds me of that South Park episode with the cable people when they're like feeling their nipples up. That's what I feel like the person who wrote this is doing right now. <laughs> Unity Pro would include Unity Asset Manager of 50 gigs per seat pooled for a team share along with an equal number of Unity Dev App seats featuring five... <laughs> This is 10 gigabytes, and then they give you 5 gigabytes. 50 gigabytes, and they still just give you 5 for additional... Oh my god. Like, I'm a dumbass, and even I can look at this and be like, I'm not this stupid.
I'm sorry I had to cut out because it was just like so ridiculous. It gets worse. Unity Enterprise with the include Unity Asset Manager. Dude, it's like a battle pass tier. 120 gigabytes per seat pooled for team to share along with an equal number of Unity DevOps seats for five. They never increase it. They give you the same amount and you're sharing 120 gigs among your team. Dude, that that is they're charging you more for less of storage and with 200 window build minutes. They don't even increase the windows build limits like 200 across the board, man. Team administration too to include custom roles and SSO provide higher degree of control. Finally, the Unity Plus is being retired for new subscribers affected today, September 12th, to simplify the numbers we plan to offer. Yeah, it's just for their, they're just like, we need to make the numbers look better, man. Existing subscri subscribers do not need to take immediate action and will receive a, an email mid-October with an offer to upgrade. Yeah, to upgrade. It's either do this or else. And you can tell developers are not happy. Uh, Cult of the Lamb, a brilliant game, absolutely incredible. You should buy it now because they're about to delist it in a January four, uh, January first, when these rules go into motion. <coughs> <coughs> so I, I'm choking in because it's just so stupid. Here's another developer. Upon reflection, we realized we have sought more input from our community and valued partners before implemented such significant change. We fell short in aspects, and for that, we are generally sorry. We have always prided ourselves in transparent and symbiotic relationship we have with our user base. Unity success story is intrinsically linked to the achievements grown of our developers. Effective immediately, we take we will be taking fifty percent a fifty percent revenue split from your games. And invest in it directly into AI technology. You love. Wow. <laughs> they had you with the first part, and the final part is just pure arrogance. Effective immediately, we will be taking 50% revenue split from your games and invest in it directly in the AI technology you love. Developers don't like these AI technologies, at least the ones I talk to. <laughs> They're like, it's not only is it poor management in the sense that it's taken away jobs that, you know, these developers work hard to obtain through years of study and cultivation of their skills. But we all saw what happened with GTA Definitive Edition when they used AI tech to fill in the gaps. That's what you get. <laughs> we also might buy another adware company or launch a third. Oh, this is a parody. I was about to say, like, there's no way they would say something this stupid. Um, this is just ridiculous. I, I almost took that for truth based on what they said. Uh, I'm pretty sure they did give an official announcement though, didn't they? I don't think they did. I genuinely thought that was an official announcement. I got punked bad. Still. <laughs> So, uh, if you know anything about Unity, you'll know that John Rich Sotelo is the CEO. And the reason I immediately cringed when I heard this name uh, is because he is infamously known for the guy who stated he would love to implement $1 reloads in Battlefield when he was a CEO at EA. When you're are when you are six hours into playing battlefield and you run out of ammo in your clip and we ask you for a dollar to reload you're really not very price sensitive at that point a customer gets engaged in a property they might want to spend 10 20 30 50 hours on the game and then when they are deep into a game they'll well invested into it we're not gouging but we're charging and at the point in time the commitment can be pretty high this is exactly what mobile game developers use insidiously in order to capitalize on this sunk cost fallacy. Like the idea that you spend so much time on a game that you'll literally spend more money to try and keep yourself afloat. Like MMOs do this, but not to the same insidious degree. I, Except World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft does this a lot <laughs> because they don't fight the bots. But yeah, this is the guy who's doing, you know, this garbage right now who implemented and the thing is the reason i wanted to take time before i published this video because it kind of came out that he sold 2,000 shares before this happened so not exactly the best look because i'm not saying that he did it this is alleged 
I'm not accusing anyone of doing this, but when you're the CEO of a company that's doing something that's incredibly unpopular and dropping your stock, in fact, let's look at Unity stock. This is the stock now. <laughs> and this is what happened after they went live with this. So if you're a company CEO and you're about to drop a huge bombshell that is probably going to lose you a lot of clients and then you beforehand sell 2,000 shares of your own stock in order, and then when the company loses all that money, it's there's a term for that. It's called insider trading because you have access to very sensitive information that no one has access to and you know how whether it's going to impact your company either positively or negatively so just saying this is alleged he saw this coming decided to sell 2000 shares of his um, of unity stock in order to try and capitalize on this and then maybe he might buy back some of that stock and then once he they go against this policy because remember this comes into uh, active policy on January 1st that's why Cult of the Lamb is going to be delisted according to the developers as backlash for all of this happening because I mean why wouldn't they that's just complete BS and you know buy it at a cheaper price <laughs> and then you know once the company stock recovers and you decide to rescind these things you make a killing I'm not saying that's what he's doing but the way he's doing it does sound pretty idiotic while at the same time really sus like I if I was like the uh, US government I would be looking into this and being like huh that's really suspicious this is really hard to prove though like you'd have to basically try and convince the jury that this person did indeed have this information used it to their benefit it's very difficult because you have to put yourself into the shoes and assume a lot of information but regardless <laughs> Wow, I'm just putting that out there. Like, this is a little sus of how he trans uh, he went along with all of this, and this has been universally discouraged. A lot of people, have like, I can't imagine in a world that this would ever be popularly seen. Like, no way in hell that anyone who read this through would say, "Yeah, this is going to be popular. It's not going to be that big of a deal," because other engine developers have been capitalizing on such as Godot and Unreal Engine so I know it, it just seems like it's seen it just seems so terrible that there has to be some reason they decided to go with this plan but I don't know like that's all I have to say about this this is completely like out there it's literally dystopian of how they're deciding to bury their own company because like I said, there are other options available. The biggest problem with that is that developers will have to learn new skills like Unity experts. They basically now have to either adapt or they won't be able to thrive in the current gaming landscape with these new policies. They'll have to learn Unreal Engine or any of those other tools. And these take extensive knowledge and testing and development in order to fully understand to the point that you become a, a professional. Like it's not easy. So I really feel for those uh, people, those hardworking individuals who are like, well, I'm fucked. Now I have to figure out whether I want to continue with this career or go somewhere else or try something else entirely. Um, so tell me what you think in the comments below. Like, sub if you want to go that far. If you don't dislike the video, that's fine too. I'm trying to improve. Either way, that's it for me. Bye.